Welcome! In today's videos we are going to be doing something a little bit different than uh, our usual uh, stuff related to firearms. I have recently purchased uh, a Lee Enfield uh, bayonet pattern 1907 which was a standard British issue bayonet with uh, the short magazine Lee Enfield service rifle. It was adopted in the year 1907 and used uh, during the First and the Second World War. And um, I decided to find out a little bit more about this, uh, this bayonet because um, as is usual with a lot of British bayonets they have uh, a lot of uh, markings either on the steel or on the wooden parts. And I cleaned up this bayonet a little bit, um, I cleaned up the wood and uh, I removed the surface rust and I noticed a lot of markings so I decided to find out a little bit more maybe about the production and uh, who was maybe using this bayonet and so on. So um, all um, British bayonets are usually marked with uh, the initials of the king uh, who, who is in reign at the time of the production of that particular bayonet. So in this case it was uh, King George, so the initials are GR, it's marked on, on the blade actually on the lower part of the blade there are the initials of the king and there is the year 1907 which which uh, refers to the year when this uh, particular type of bayonet was adapted for military service now what I noticed next was that there are two separate numbers 8 and 16 so according to information uh, which is um, common knowledge amongst the collectors. Um, this uh, refers to the moment when the bayonet was actually produced and put into service. So that would be the October of the year 1916, which is pretty nice because that means that this bayonet was actually in service during the Second World War and probably also during uh, the Second... Uh, during uh, It was adopted during the First World War and was probably in service during the First World War and also probably during the Second World War as well. Now, next one is the marking which shows that this bayonet was actually adopted and removed from official service. So once this uh, became obsolete or was not used by the army or the army decided to sell this for whatever reason, um, it was marked um, as removed from the service and uh, uh, available for, for purchase by private citizens or private companies. Uh, there is also a marking on the blade which would indicate that this bayonet was proved by bending. It's a small X and there is a small there is a small arrow on the lower part of the blade as well which indicates that this was actually adopted for service in the army. Now, here comes the interesting part. I wanted to really know where does this planet come from? And this is where the actual investigation started. I have noticed that there is a name of the producer on the lower part of the blade. Um, this is spelled Chapman. And it took me a little while to, to find out um, what this company actually was or who was this producer. So I started with a simple Google search which didn't bring up very much. Um, Chapman is known um, by bayonet collectors as one of producers of these bayonets during the First World War and according to, to um, some information on internet uh, this company actually produced uh, nearly 300,000 bayonets uh, until the year 8, 1980, until the end of the First World War. Well, this seems to be a lot, but it really isn't. Uh, for example, one of the biggest uh, producers, Wilkinson, produced over 2 million of these during the First World War. So, 300,000 isn't really a huge number. So, the next step was to find something, find out something about the company. Google again provided additional information. Um, the company actually was actually named James 
R. Scott Chapman or James A. Chapman Limited. Some of these bayonets are actually marked as JAC, which is abbreviation of uh, obviously of James R. Scott Chapman, and uh, some of them um, some of them are marked James A. Chapman. In this case, it is only Chapman, but uh, I'm assuming that this is basically the same company because I didn't come up, I didn't came across any information that there would be actually two companies with the same or such a similar name. Now, um, I didn't find out much about this company because uh, it uh, doesn't exist anymore. Um, according to, to some additional information on Google, um, this uh, company wasn't specialized in military hardware. It was uh, a company to, that was producing general tools for, for general work, like I don't know, hammers, sizzles and so on. And it was located in Sheffield, which is logical since Sheffield is, was um, in the industrial heartland of Great Britain at that time. And this company stopped uh, to exist in the year 1937 when it was uh, bought by the Stanley Tool Company. And another Google search provided me with the information that uh, the Stanley Tool Company was actually located at Woodside Lane in Sheffield and was active there during the years 1924 and 1939. Uh, that's a very important information because I didn't find any address for the original Chapman company. So, the next step for me was uh, to Google search uh, the Woodside Lane in Sheffield. And uh, I was trying to find, um, uh, I would say, any, any buildings or reminders of the original original. Um, Chapman company or uh, the new Stanley Tool company. Uh, obviously, uh, I wasn't able to travel to Sheffield in person just to, to to investigate this matter, but I was pretty successful because after a little while searching on, on Google Earth and Street View, I actually found some buildings which seems to belong to the Stanley Tool company. And some of these buildings actually look very old. They are either early 20th century or late 19th century um, really industrial style industrial era style buildings well so I probably did find a place or one of those places where these bayonets were originally produced in Sheffield but that's not all <clears throat> I wanted to investigate further there are certain markings on uh, the wooden part of this bayonet and it reads uh, something like 6.05 this doesn't seem to be done individually by a soldier this seems to be produced uh, on industrial scale or by by somebody who was who was marking these bayonets at the unit level or or army level or or the the armorer of the unit or something like that um, and fortunately this my investigation didn't didn't show any um, any explanation for this uh, number for this marking on on the wooden part. These wooden parts are original because from the inside uh, they are marked with uh, the usual uh, usual uh, stampings, uh, which are also present on the on the steel part uh, of the bayonet. Uh, this bayonet unfortunately isn't unit marked, so uh, in the end I wasn't able to, to find out any more details about the service of this bayonet. It came with a scabbard which I don't know if, is, uh, if it was issued with this bayonet. I don't think so. The, the scabbard uh, is original, but uh, it doesn't have and doesn't show any markings that would associate it with this particular um, bayonet. It's marked with the number 40009 on the steel part, but that's basically all. There are no additional markings on the leather or on the steel. So, well, that was it. Uh, I'm actually pretty happy because I did find a place where this bayonet was actually produced. 
and uh, it was uh, it was a bit exciting to to see that this well maybe this is the factory where where this bayonet comes from and where it was produced over a hundred years ago okay so maybe we will be doing something like this also in the future because we have a lot of stuff which <laughs> would be pretty interesting to know where does it come from where was it produced and also maybe where did it serve thanks for watching